from the depths instant tutorial. Fuel engines is a very efficient way to produce powering from the depth. The good way with them is that they adapt the power they produce to the power used. Inside here you can see the different parts and I will show you the different types of engines you can do. Inside here you see the fuel engine generator. This block is the main piece of the engine and this can absolutely not be destroyed. Now to make the simplest engine you can do, you basically place a cylinder on top of this and then you have your engine. We need material storage because engines uses materials. While they use material, you can't only have normal material boxes. Some of the material you have needs to be in the form of fuel storage tanks. The fuel storage tanks, they don't really store fuel, but they let fuel engines use materials as fuel. And if you hover over it, you can see that it uses materials. And if you go over here, you can see that uh, this one makes it so we can extract 100 materials as fuel per minute. And it also calculates how many you need. So just hover over a fuel tank when you have completed your engine and you know how many fuel tanks you actually need to supply your engines. The fuel tanks aren't explosive, but they are flammable, so they're more easily destructible than normal material containers. First, I'm going to show how to make the most efficient and compact engine, uh, or space efficient rather. To test engines, we need something that uses all the engine power. So we're going to spawn this ECM scrambler here and just set it to max and it will eat up all the engine power we make. So, for example, if we start building this engine I'm talking about, well, we're going to have one of these, a crankshaft. A crankshaft lets you connect many cylinders around it like this. And we're going to make this little rose pattern thing. Now, uh, in order to lead away gases and cool it down, we need to connect up something like this. And now when we look at it, you can see that it uses 0.12 materials per second and we produce a current power of 57. If we go down here and set this to power use to use only 30, you can hear that our engine is now slower and it uses less materials per second than we did before, only now 0.06. So that's a little good thing about fuel engines, they really do adapt. Now uh, for the smallest engines you don't really need exhaust pipes, uh, but you definitely need it when we're going to add this. This thing is an injector. The injector lets you make really efficient engines in space. So you can see the current power is 56, but we add this and we're suddenly at 600 power and we can add this here as well and now we produce 1000 power and uh, you might think that wow these injectors connect up to two cylinders very nice can't we just connect up injectors on all these sides well you can but you probably hear that sound yeah that was one of the cylinders popping uh, they kind of pop like that when they get overheated. It's important to make sure that your engines are not getting overheated. And now we can see we have added a lot of exhaust pipes. Here we have the sound of what happens when we have too few fuel tanks. Now it will tell you this as well, so don't worry. We're just going to add a big fuel tank below here during testing, so we don't need to worry about it. Having two injectors per cylinder really decreases its uh, efficiency and having one injector is more than enough. It already burns three materials per second using this kind of setup. And if we hover over it, we can see that the temperature decreases power to 65%. This is not very nice. What we can do, however, is add more uh, exhaust pipes. And when we do this, we can bring the efficiency up again. So this would be a pretty nice setup to just continue. And uh, we could repeat this pattern 
to make the engine larger. Uh, it would look a little bit like the prefab, this thing, but uh, with more exhaust pipes. And I really recommend you having those exhaust pipes to make it a little bit more efficient. Cylinders can be placed along the crankshaft of an engine. But if you want some more exotic placements, you can use the adapter. The adapter lets you put cylinders away from the crankshaft in other constellations. I think it's time we go into the fuel engine generator. Inside here, we can look at some different settings and outputs. The priority, you can change it to low if you have other engines you rather use and have this as a backup, or set this to maximum if you want to use this engine over all others. Now, if you have batteries to power certain weapons, that require batteries, you can change the battery charge fraction to something higher if you mainly use your engines to charge the batteries. This can be a smart idea. They will however provide normal engine power as long as there is nothing that needs to be charged. What you also can do is limit the RPM of the engine. This will also reduce the materials used. Right now we produce 12 power. If we add another cylinder, we suddenly produce 26. Very nice. If we look at this cylinder again, we can see what happens if we put on one injector here. Well, it suddenly goes to 200, but of course it will get really hot. Exhausts are a little bit strange. They can't be blocked by any block in front of it. So when we add a block here, you can see it claims it's not externally vented. This is strange. There are some different ways to come around this little problem. What you can do is of course going into the exhausts and adding hull pipe. These hull pipes work as kind of hull and you can just have the exhausts going out of the vehicle like this or this if you prefer. Another smart way you can do is to just go to air, go to ducts and Add a little duct from the material that you prefer. This way you can have the engine be more protected by still letting it exhaust its uh, gases out from the hull. Very useful. Cooling engines with exhausts make them much more efficient. Uh, so the temperature won't de decrease the power much if you have a lot of exhausts. But you also have to be sensible in terms of space. To make engines that are more efficient in terms of power per material, you'll need to use the carburetor. And the carburetor goes on top of the cylinder. Now this will overheat, so we need to cool this down in a way. And of course, we can of course use our um, exhausts, just as normal. There is another way, however, to make them also more efficient. Because the carburetor, it's a kind of old thing that mixes uh, fuel and air in a nice mixture, but we can add these things, cylinder turbochargers, and uh, these will make it much more efficient in uh, high RPMs. If we just uh, connect up this little piece here to the cylinder and make this little upper piece go to that one, you can see it's now connected up, and then we'll need to use its uh, mirror image right here and we have connected it up. So you can't see the connection, but this upper connection goes to the carburetor here. And as you can see, adding this gives us more power, but it also gives us more power per material. So the engine is now more efficient, which is very nice. You can see we have this exhaust here and uh, the power per material is 571. If we just remove this, it's uh, now increasing. So um, it's more efficient when we cycle all the gases through the carburetor, if we can, of course, because we also need to think about cooling. The supercharger we can place on top of the carburetor. This will make our engine really tall and it looks really fast. But what this does is makes it generate more power when we are at a lower RPM. So basically, if the engine is not loaded very much and we can run it at slow speeds, and when we're making this, uh, we need to, of course, connect up 
the exhausts of these things if we want to have more of them and make them uh, work together a little bit better. Here you have the carbureted turbochargers and here we have the cylinder turbochargers. The main difference is that the cylinder turbocharger will be directly connected up to the cylinder just like this. You gotta learn how to connect them up. Here you can see. Now this complaints it isn't externally vented so we're going to fix that right. Now it's externally vented, but now you can see it's connected up directly from the cylinder to the carburetor. Very nice. It has a power per material boost there, 86. And here you can see this one, which is the carburetor turbocharger, has the same boost. But this one doesn't connect up directly to the cylinder, but we need to feed it gases from one cylinder to it. We can feed it from the cylinder's carburetor uh, we connect it to, or we can just feed it from another cylinder on the same engine, and it gives us the same boost. Now this is a good idea when you're making compact engines, you need to lead the gases around here. And the exhaust from one cylinder goes into the bottom of this one. And this thing here is of course the exhaust going out there. Very nice. Can be a little bit hard to understand which is the exhaust and which is the intake. But when you are having an exhaust pipe in your hands, you can see uh, where it basically can connect up by looking at the green connection points. So uh, that's basically the difference. There is no difference between the carbureted and the cylinder one. It's just how they connect up. And to give you some additional understanding about these different types of engines, I built two engines that are quite similar in terms of performance and cylinders, but also quite different. Now, this is my favorite engine, as I probably already told you, with uh, four cylinders with one injector per cylinder connected up, since they connected two, and a lot of exhaust connected all over the place. So you can see each of the cylinders are connected up to two exhausts, and we could of course increase this number. That they are connected together like this doesn't matter very much. As long as the gases can flow out of the cylinders, that's absolutely fine, and that we're not blocked. This engine produces 1200 power and has a power per material ratio of 375. If we instead look at this much larger engine, but with of course as many cylinders, you can see it only produces 725 power, but it instead has a power per material ratio of 580 almost. So that's like quite much more efficient. And of course, if we want to make this more efficient at lower RPMs, we can just, well, it doesn't matter in which direction we place them really, we can just add a couple of turbo chargers, no, I mean super chargers to the carburetors. And um, the super chargers will make it run more efficient at lower RPMs as well. And if we look here, you can see that this bigger engine uses 1.25 material per second. This is extremely low. And if we go to this engine, well, it instead uses 3.2 materials per second. I still think it's pretty low. And understand that you need to protect your engines as well. So making the engines smaller also makes it easier to protect them. The radiators connect to any of the cylinders or the crankshaft itself. But it not only cools the cylinder it's connected to, it actually cools the entire engine. All of these cylinders are now cooled even though it's only technically connected to the top one. And we can place down one here as well. And you can see it's connected to the crankshaft, which works perfectly fine. Adding radiators will make the engine produce better power and more power per material if we had problems with the engine being less efficient due to it overheating a little bit. And you can see this one. The current power is now 1200. But if we put this thing back, we are uh, basically 1300 because we're now having a cooler engine. Very nice. 
Oh, and the radiator, they don't really care if you block them off with blocks like this. Um, it's only the exhausts you need to care about when not blocking off. So uh, it's absolutely fine to block off the radiator like this, but it's not fine blocking the uh, exhaust like this. Now you can see the entire engine complains. In any case, I hope you learned something about engines today. And if you did, please leave a like and do check out our other instant tutorials. This is your host, Jim Rissen, signing out.